What's good everyone, it's ZigZag here. Welcome back to another GeoGuessr video. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you guys through some diverse world seeds and just explaining my entire thought process so that you guys can have a better idea of what goes through my mind when I'm able to get rounds really quickly. So instead of going really quickly, I'm gonna be giving you my full thought process. This video is also kind of an advertisement for my second channel where I do really similar videos every single day. So if you want to get better at the game, then you should be following that every day. It's really, really beneficial, I would say. But okay, let's get into the first one today. So the link for this game will be in the description. You you can check that out, hit the link and play it before you watch me here so that when you watch this, you can uh, compare it to your own guesses and see where I was able to gain some extra insight over you. Okay, first one here is interesting. So let's break it down. Uh, we'll have advanced tips and beginner tips in this video. What I like to say first is look at the road line. So we've got white outer lines here with the yellow single inner line. Obviously we have poles here to help us out, but first off, this yellow single inner line is not found in too many places. And especially because we have these this Asian language here, we can really break it down. So yellow single inner line you could see in Thailand in Southeast Asia, you could see it in Japan and South Korea as well. Um, normally Taiwan would be using a double yellow line and then many of these other countries like, like Indonesia could also have it as well. So that's basically covering most of it. I think Cambodia as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's fairly common in Asia, but then in Sri Lanka and in Bangladesh and in Malaysia, you would not see it. So you can immediately rule out some countries like that when you see this. Um, we also have concrete poles with kind of dots all the way down them and this kind of big spike at the top. And that is definitely something that you'd see. This big spike at the top, you definitely see that in Japan and Korea most commonly. So we basically um, narrowed it down to those two already. And then we have this black and yellow uh, guard on it, um, which does not go all the way down to, down, to, down to the ground. That should be somewhere in Korea because the Japanese one uh, would have vertical structures Perhaps where these ones are horizontal um, or not horizontal, but diagonal. Um, we also have some farmland here, which makes me think more of the south. Um, are they black rock walls there? I'm just trying to think this could be Jeju because in Jeju you have black rock walls, but I think this is just something that's been burned. And let's ch check it out. Do we have any black rock walls here? To be honest, it doesn't really feel like Jeju. I think these mountains in the background are too far distant. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't go Jeju here. Instead, I would probably go somewhere in the south of the country like this. It ends up being 43 kilometers away, so a really nice start there. Um, so we'll make that a one country streak and head into the next round here. Okay, next one. Um, we don't have Google Car here. I I've intentionally block that out so that we are teaching more less reliant on meta tips which I think uh, will serve us better when the new generations of cameras come out and stuff like that um, okay so this one immediately feeling like Europe with this architecture right um, one thing I would say is like if you see a road without any markings and it seems like quite a wealthy or a wealthier country um, then it's less likely to be like North America more likely to be um, Europe so especially because it's quite thin as well if, 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 if you couldn't go two cars abreast if it's only enough room for one car to really travel it's more of a European thing I would say definitely um, let's take a look here at some of these houses so we've got like some like kind of red tiled roofs here some of the houses are kind of black and made of wood which is interesting um, as for poles they seem to be made of wood or is that concrete it's actually kind of hard for me to say here this again is actually kind of hard to say we have hooks on either side like that um, this kind of hooked pole is most famously found in Latvia but with this amount of hilliness we know we're not in Latvia like you'd never see a hill that tall in Latvia um, in fact the whole Baltics are quite flat um, so moving down towards maybe the more Balkan side of things you do see this kind of hooked pole like that quite commonly in Bulgaria not really sure if this is Bulgaria, but it could be found there. Also, I feel like Slovenia and Croatia quite often have it, maybe even Montenegro as well. So that's kind of that's kind of some thoughts here. We have kind of like a reddish soil, which I'm not really sure how to interpret either. But okay, let's check out the sky here, because we have some mini rifts. So I do wonder if that could maybe indicate that we were in uh, Montenegro, because obviously Montenegro and Albania are the countries where you do have bigger rifts often in the sky, but we don't really see those, so I don't know. Um, taking a look at the rest of the architecture and everything, I do think it could fit for Montenegro. Obviously, we don't have that kind of typical, like, rocky uh, mountain face that you would often see there, um, so I don't want to get baited here. Um, so let's just take a look. This, this house almost feels like a bit Austrian in the way that I would expect to like see in Slovenia or maybe even Croatia. Um, but the rest of it is kind of generic. So yeah, this one's actually kind of a difficult round. I, I, I may end up going the wrong country here. I think my, my instinct is one of these three countries. I would be surprised if it's not one of these three countries that I've mentioned here. Um, and I think I may just go for Montenegro because of these mini rifts in the sky. Although, as I said, they can be found in other countries and I would not be surprised to be wrong here. Um, but okay, if it was Montenegro, I would say maybe, maybe further in the south of the country, like somewhere like this. Uh, not too confident. Maybe I should go 
Slovenia even. I don't know. Yeah, architecture, it's all its all a bit ambiguous. I can even see possibly Serbia here. Serbia is not impossible, um, especially because we can't see the car, whereas Serb Serbia would normally have no antenna, but we can't see that, of course. Okay, so I could hedge it in Serbia. That's not actually a bad idea, I think. Maybe I should hedge it in Serbia here. Well, I've talked a lot, and I think I'll just make my guess here. I'm going to hedge it in Serbia, and it was actually just over the border in Montenegro. So we lose the country there, but get quite a good score. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and so sometimes in Montenegro, you won't see the full rifts. Okay, next one here is pretty straightforward with the language, but let's talk about how uh, this round is gettable. So this kind of black and white um, diagonal um, sticker on the pole is quite Russian. We also have like uh, all white road lines, which you definitely see in Russia. We have these long white number plates, which don't have a blue strip. We have this red and white um, kind of uh, thing on the pole, which is actually quite a Russian thing to do. Um, uh, houses off, uh, feel quite Russian here. Green roof, quite a Russian thing to do. Um, not super common, but if you see it, you can definitely consider Russia. Uh, round speed signs here, obviously, and the bollard spam at the intersection. This is a big one. So Russia at Russia, at big kind of highway intersections, which you'll see quite a lot in this coverage. You often have these bollards with the black top and uh, not necessarily with black top, but you often see like a whole bunch of them lining the whole um, intersection. So um, obviously then we also have this Russian language here. And so now we've got to think about where this is. So I'm looking at these trees. They are really tall. Oftentimes really tall trees are somewhere around Moscow or a bit north of Moscow. However, I'm not so sure about this round whether that actually fits. We also have a really dense bunch of like birch trees here. When you see really dense birch trees, that can that can often indicate like kind of like Novosibirsk, Krasnoyarsk kind of area. So I actually think I'll put my marker there for now as I look at the rest of the round. Because obviously Russia, it's a hard country, and so I could not I could not guarantee that I'll get close here at all. Um, we do have some hilliness, because that could fit for that kind of area of the country. Um, Car meta would definitely help here, but obviously we're going without car. Um, yeah, it's just these trees that feel a bit more Moscow area, but but yeah, actually looking at these ones, I, I do kind of like further out. Now, it could just be kind of Tumen, um, kind of Urals kind of area as well. I'm kind of worried that it might be more so there, um, but I do, yeah, I do get the feeling that it's somewhere between here and here. That's really my guess with these kind of really clumped tall trees um, like this. This this particularly looks quite Siberian and kind of middle Siberian. Okay, so I have to make up my mind here again. It's not an easy round, so I'm just I just want to take my whole uh, thought process in here. As for me, I think I may actually go Tumen here instead of uh, going further east, but I guess we'll find out here. Uh, let us guess in Tumen itself, and it will be actually just in Moscow. Okay, so. Uh, I thought the uh, tree, the, those dense trees might have been more of a, uh, of a Siberian looking one, but uh, I was wrong. Uh, the tall, the really tall kind of orange barked trees uh, were I guess the clue there. And that's really the kind of a Moscow area thing. So at least I mentioned it, but uh, was not able to get clo too close there, unfortunately. It's still an okay score, but nothing, nothing very good. Okay, next one here, we have fairly obvious clues for the country. So let's run through it. So first off, we're noticing that we've got um, blue strips on all the plates. That's definitely useful. Um, we have another number plate meta over there, but let's take a look over this direction first. Okay, signage and language obviously do help as well. Um, we do have these uh, pedestrian crossing signs with only four dashes. Uh, countries that only use four dashes, so Sweden and Norway are two that only use four dashes. I'm trying to think off uh, on my feet why other countries actually only use four, because most countries in Europe use five or three, um, with some exceptions, but they're the only ones that come to mind at the moment. Tell me in the comments if you can think of any others. We also have all these long dashes on the outside of the road here. This time it's actually quite useful. Uh, so these would be like half the length in Sweden, but you get this length in Norway. Also, we know it's Norway because of this green number plate over here on the service van. Uh, can't really think of anywhere else that you'd see that on a van, or that you may see that these days in Eastern Europe. A lot of times green number plates indicate um, like electronic vehicles. So that's also uh, worthwhile to know. I don't know where this place is, um, but I do get the feeling this could be kind of like central uh, in Norway or maybe southern. Um, although I don't see I don't see northern as absolutely impossible either. I'm just not really sure. So I think I might click center here because I'm yeah I just don't really know. Uh, there was something else I wanted to mention here. Obviously architecture would help out. It looks like we're in some kind of a skiing like town or something like that. I don't know where the skiing actually happens, but I suppose like where some of these taller peaks are might might be it. But yeah, I guess my, my 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 real thought was to kind of click over here just as a bit of a hedge as well because I don't really know where this is. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely definitely going to be Norway. There's something else I wanted to mention. I think I forgot. So let me know if you, in the comments if you uh, see anything else in this uh, round, but I will guess right now. And it was just like down near the biggest mountains here, which makes sense. 
Uh, and was that actually a ski town? It was very touristy for sure, but I don't see any ski slopes, so maybe just a tourist town instead. But hey, not bad. Uh, we got the right country again. And the last one of the first seed here is looking like it's going to be somewhere in, um, well, actually, let's take a look around here. So first off, uh, first things first, let's take a look at the number plates. So this looks like a shorter number plate here, which is very useful when you have this kind of Latin American vibe, because uh, some countries use longer number plates and some shorter. So this one also kind of feels like it's going to be a shorter number plate rather than a longer one. Uh, this one is really hard to tell, but I think the number plate actually ends like that. From what we've seen on the other cars, it would make sense if the number plate was also short here, I think. Um, we have wooden poles as well, which is definitely interesting. I, I, I could not say uh, this is a particularly easy round, because I think the country we're in does normally use... Uh, does normally use concrete poles instead of wooden ones, so a little bit of bait here, potentially. Uh, we do have quite a few palms here, um, like the whole the whole vibe of the round is a bit greener um, than maybe what I would have expected. Um, do we have like a, a number plate there? Almost feels a bit black, but I don't think we're actually using black number plates here. This church architecture is certainly interesting as well, um, although I don't know if I could really say anything specific about it. Okay, moving on here. Um, the sun here is to the south, which I think is probably the biggest clue. If you if you weren't really clued in with the number plates here, the sun being to the south is huge here because that really cuts off, you know, Argentina and Brazil or most of Brazil, uh, where you might be tempted to guess in around like this with quite reddish soil. It's fair to say, but yeah, with these wooden poles, with this predominance of wooden pro poles, it shouldn't be Brazil. With the sun there, it shouldn't be Argentina. So we should be looking at Mexico here with short number plates and with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, these poles. Um, as I said, Mexico would normally use like octagonal concrete poles, but it is possible to see so many wooden ones. And I almost get the feeling we might be very close to the United States here, especially because on this bus it says stop instead of alto, um, which uh, it normally would say alto on uh, stop signs in in uh, in Mexico. Um, also, we have like three American trucks in a row here. I think to see sh three like Chevrolets or Ford pickup trucks in a row inside um, like South America would be quite unlikely, whereas in Mexico it's quite common. And then finally, we also have like a, a Coca-Cola dispenser here and they love Coca-Cola in uh, Mexico, so that's also something to note. But okay, with this many palms, we shouldn't be too far from water. Um, I'm thinking like kind of this region over here. Um, it could even just be like like near Tijuana, like Mexicali kind of area, but yeah, I do I, I don't, do not want to guess too far from the US border here just because the amount of a wooden poles, but yeah, I think I'll go somewhere over here. Um, I, I maybe like this kind of this kind of region here. I mean, we can always check the angle of the road, and it seems like it actually might be on a grid here, so that could actually work. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be somewhere in northern Mexico. Let's just give this a go. And it was actually in that kind of area there, 28 kilometers away. I think also this area has some more red dirt. So that's actually a really nice guess, making up for some of our poorer guesses in that one. So let me know how you did on that first seed. Probably many of you beat me because of my lackluster Russia and uh, uh, fin uh, Norway guesses. But uh, let us head into another one here and hopefully uh, improve on 20,000, which is certainly improvable on. Okay, next link is also in the description. So go ahead and play that. And our first one here is a pretty obvious country for me. Um, so let's run through why exactly that is. Okay, so we've got reddish dirt here. We've got a lot of corrugated iron roofs, and we also have, have a taxi here with yellow panels on it. So uh, with yellow number plates and taxis with yellow panels, this should mean we're gonna be somewhere in Ghana. Pretty straightforward round, especially because you guys will be playing with the Google car, which um, is pretty obvious for Ghana. So we have kind of biggish mountains here. Uh, mountains in Ghana kind of like along this section here and then south and around Kumasi. Um, I think I may have had this round before, the town feels familiar to me, um, but regardless, we have wooden poles here, um, generally speaking, uh, Nigeria and Senegal would both use more concrete poles, whereas Ghana is more of a wooden pole country, which is definitely useful if you're playing No Car No Compass or NMPZ or something like that. Uh, we have these big ditches, which also definitely fits for Ghana as well, and yeah, the yellow number place is the big one here, because yellow fronts and rears should really just be Ghana here. Also a bit of English as well, I can only assume. Uh, the, the crossbar are also kind of like thin metal here or so well which fits and then also we have like big bulbs here which can fit for like Ghana and Nigeria quite often so I think this is someone new Kumasi is as far as I remember I think I've had this round before maybe a year ago or something but I think I remember it so let's see if I'm right about that and yeah it was there I kind of remembered uh, where that was so there we go a uh, very good score to start us off with uh, but yeah that kind of area is quite green and hilly so keep that in mind okay next one here we once again have that spike on the top of the pole this one looking a little bit different though um, and uh, let's take a look around here. Okay, 
Yeah, good to know. Okay, so this uh, is Japan. We have the low camera here. We've got that, that, that kind of wide blur. Um, we are uh, set up for left-hand drive as well. So if you couldn't tell, it was low camera, should be left-hand drive, and that would pretty much exclude um, South Korea because the sign is on the left-hand side of the road here. Um, this is an interesting one. I honestly thought that this would be somewhere s in southern Japan, just based on this kind of long grass. Now I'm starting to doubt myself. I think this actually could be quite a bit further north than I initially anticipated. Um, so I don't really know. I'm not, I'm not a Japan expert, so that's really worth bearing in mind here. We have this uh, black and yellow kind of guy wire here, and I'm pretty sure black and yellow guy wires are more Shikoku and then more northern Japan. And the, the thing that makes me actually think this is maybe northern Japan here is these um, like red and white poles here, which I definitely think can be found around the place, but are common in northern Japan, like in this kind of area here. So that's where I think we are. I'm kind of worried that this is all the way wrong and that we could be southern here, but it doesn't look like the southern guy wire and those tend to be pretty consistent. Um, I also don't really know about the plates that are found on the poles here, which are also useful. Um, I, yeah, I'm just not too sure. Um, it's not too mountainous and you do kind of get quite a few flat regions around this part of the country, especially near the coast. So I could see it. I might just hedge kind of here. I'm hoping it's not on Shikoku or something like that, but um, I'm kind of using these poles as my as my evidence here because this grass almost feels a bit more southern, um, but it also almost feels a bit like coastal as well, vibes wise. So we'll see here. I'm just going to go for the guess and we'll be correct or not. Okay, well, it's actually on this peninsula here. So I don't really know how the other guy wires work here. It's not a bad school. We're actually not that far away uh, by Japan standards there, but uh, yeah, it was a fairly easy Japan. So that's at least good with the low camera. It always helps out. Okay, next one here, our country is immediately obvious from when I load in, so let's uh, try and break that down. Okay, so a double yellow line in the center of the road is actually quite useful here. Obviously, double yellows um, and uh, meaning more often the, you know, the United States uh, or South America or something like that. Um, definitely in countries that prefer to use double yellows, you can see it all around as well. As I've said earlier in the video, Taiwan, you can even see it in, Japan, uh, in New Zealand and all around the spot. But yeah, in a, on a round like this, kind of flat, concrete pole, um, kind of uh, this American looking style, a style of like green and white text sign should be somewhere in like North or South America here. Now, um, I would actually say vibes wise, this is this is really quite an Argentinian Uruguayan looking round. And even still, it looks much more Argentinian than it lo looks Uruguayan. But that could just be confirmation bias because this can't be Uruguayan because in Uruguay, instead of using double yellows, they would have a double yellow with a white dash in the center of it, which we just do not have at all here. And so that should mean we're in Argentina. Also, this round pole with this particular pole top, which is kind of like a bow, almost looks like a bow or something like that. That's Argentinian. Uh, Maybe you can find it in like Peru as well, um, but yeah, yeah, it should be just Argentinian here uh, with this landscape. Uh, yeah, and also we don't see any mountains, and obviously in the vast majority of Peru you would see mountains, so that's also helping. Okay, so I think this is kind of like somewhere around here between Cordoba and Nequen somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. I might hedge closer to Cordoba here, um, and uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say on this one. It's fairly simple with the uh, with the poles and the road markings. So let's just go there. And uh, it was actually near Nequen instead. Should have gone further south, but that's okay. Uh, it was very green for that area. It often starts to get a bit drier by then. Anywho, next round is kind of interesting. This is one I could not say I know the country immediately. So let's, let's check it out. Uh, we've got a uh, sign, which is uh, a red um, outlined diamond or triangle, which is uh, set up for right-hand drive. So that, that kind of uh, style of signage is most common in Europe and Africa uh, with the, uh, with the um, uh, triangle. We have like some fruit trees here. So feeling like a warmer climate. We have some like potentially holy poles here. I would say these are probably holy poles. So that definitely helps out. Um, concrete poles with holes in them. We already know Romania, Hungary, and Poland are the three countries that love to do those. These ones definitely seem thicker. So Poland basically cut out. So it should be Romania or, or Hungary. And this landscape kind of rolling uh, with some more wooden poles as well. I don't know, it can be either. It can still be either here. And one thing that makes me think this is actually still possibly Hungary is that this looks like another sign and it looks like it's really tall and small. And so that would be a Hungarian type of thing to do. But I must say that the rest of the round does feel quite Romanian. So I'm thinking of guessing somewhere on the border here, because this really looks like a Hungarian type of sign where it's like small and high. Uh, but the rest of the round, I probably would have gone Romania. So that's kind of my thought process here. 
Um, it almost feels like a Romanian sign as well. So I think I really do click right on the border here. Maybe, maybe even just in Romania because I just feel like the landscape fits better. Um, uh, anything else to say here? Uh, a lot of crops. Feels quite sunny as well. That they both fit for Romania, I would say. Um, white road lines, obviously European thing. Uh, and then we, we're lacking any architecture or anything like that. So you can kind of distinguish the two countries from architecture quite often. But uh, yeah, on this occasion, maybe not. Uh, do I trust this sign? I feel like I maybe should just trust the sign, but no, I'm gonna go with my heart here. My heart says like Romania on the border. So let's see if I'm right. And it was Romania, good. Ends up being just Southern there. Um, maybe that sign in the distance was not what I thought it was. Um, but yeah, we, we come up with the country streak there. So that's at least good. Okay, next one here. I immediately know the country here, so let's break down why exactly this is where it is. Okay, so first off, we got the yellow diamond sign. This is the opposite to the uh, European style that we were just looking at. It has a thick white uh, post here as well, which you would not see in Australia, so that's at least something. Also, we got blue street signs here. If you have like a pure color street sign, like a blue one, like a yellow one, like something like that, maybe even green, um, well, I'd say blue and yellow are definitely much, much more common in New Zealand than Australia. Um, Australia normally uses white ones with some kind of colored text, normally just black text, so it's really normally that simple. Um, we also do appear to have wooden poles here, which is interesting, and some taller mountains in the north there, so this all helps. Um, at this stage in time, New Zealand is a country that tends to have more Generation 3 in less populated areas, so that's just a good little rule of thumb, um, or less Generation 4 at least. Okay, we've got tall poplar kind of trees here. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really too much else to say. I mean, this kind of uh, style of chevron is more New Zealand than Australia, but it's kind of hard to describe why. It's kind of a bit thicker, a bit taller. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we've got these like long rows of trees, which obviously also fits kind of, kind of like Christchurch area. So I could see us being kind of like in the outskirts of like Christchurch area, even further south, anywhere to like, I'll say anywhere to Dunedin kind of works here. Although the mountains in the north feel quite distant, so Dunedin's obviously quite close to the mountains, whereas uh, Christchurch, it's not that it's not that difficult to like find yourself relatively far from the mountains, like in this kind of area. I might even go over here, to be honest. That's kind of my thought here. Um, I definitely think South Island, just because of these like huge rows of trees, um, and wooden poles are often more common in South Island as well. So I'll go there. Let's see if we're correct about that. Ends up being in that kind of area. Very nice indeed. So we had some better guesses there. Definitely the Ghana, the New Zealand uh, came out nicer. We got all countries correct and I should have had better on the Argentina. I really called it out. So let's go for one more game here and see how it happens. Again, in the description if you want to play along. And first round here, we have an extremely distinctive road here. So uh, let me try and drill this one into your brain if you are someone who uh, likes to remember some roads on GeoGuessr. So uh, Chile is one of these countries that occasionally uses all yellow lines. Um, and uh, when you have this overcast coverage on a concrete road with like ocean nearby, and it feels fairly southern, a bit desolate, um, but also quite green, then you should be somewhere on, is it the number nine or the number seven? What is it? The number nine here in Southern Chile. Uh, we also do have ocean here to our east, which definitely makes sense for us to be somewhere like around here, I would say. If we see more kind of land in the distance here, slight hills, that definitely fits. That definitely fits. So I would assume we're somewhere in like the Southern number nine here, uh, could even be kind of a bit further up as well. And so, yeah, that's what you gotta remember. All yellows, concrete, um, overcast and uh, yeah, kind of dreary with a lack of trees, but you can see forests as well, of course, like that. Uh, so I'd say we just get somewhere around here and hope for the best here. And indeed, we are right there, so very nice. 39 kilometers away, you can basically get three points uh, by remem remembering that road because it's basically the only one in this southern region of Chile post um, or like after the uh, National Park of Torres del Paine. So there we go, or oh, Paine. So next one here. Eastern European vibe immediately with this kind of like rusted and colorful fence here. Um, and also this kind of red and yellow, uh, red and white motif is very, uh, very Eastern European. We've got another one of these triangle signs. We've got a white center line here as well. It's hilly. We've got some like corn growing there, which also is something you often see in that area of the world. Without an antenna, this is actually a relatively difficult round. Um, countries that come to mind with this kind of drier climate, like Romania, Ukraine, maybe in Serbia, maybe even Hungary or Bulgaria, that kind of region is really feeling most likely to me here. With the hilliness about it, definitely 
isolates it to certain areas. We, with that kind of hilliness, we probably wouldn't be in Eastern Ukraine, probably Western Ukraine, Romania kind of vibe here, I would say. Single white line is interesting as well. I feel like some of these countries would use this double double white. So I'm wondering, maybe, maybe Serbia is actually quite possible here. Maybe this is Serbia. I don't know about this sign. I think rusted, rusted signposts are definitely more common in some countries than others, but it's definitely hard to, hard to put your finger on it. But okay, if it is Serbia, it's gonna be Southern Serbia because Northern Serbia is quite uh, flat. Whereas uh, as soon as you get south of Belgrade, you start getting those mountains. So I would say, I would say, I would say Serbia is a good, a good chat here, actually. I'm not really sure about the country. It could even be further north, like uh, Croatia, Slovenia. Uh, just so I have covered all my bases here in case I'm wrong. But I think that's really the possible countries here. Slovenia, Croatia, Hungary, Bulgaria. Yeah, without, without Google Car, it is difficult, but I think I will uh, hit it in Serbia here. We'll be correct. We were in Serbia, even quite close here. So we're actually on a good score to start off this seed. So let's see if we can continue on that luck. We have a yellow sticker on this poll. Uh, so in Japan, which, which we are again here with this uh, low camera, uh, small cars have yellow number plates. So that's also another nice little tip here. If they ever don't do uh, Japan with low cam, then you can definitely use that to your advantage. This yellow sticker, I feel like that might be, you know, this kind of central region here, like Gifu or something. Fukui or something like that. I'm not really sure. Nagano, maybe even. I forget. Um, taking a look at the architecture here. We've got like a flat roof. We don't really have enough flat roofs to really gain anything from that. We have again this kind of uh, black and yellow striped um, guy wire, which we last time saw in this region. So maybe I even go Ishikawa or something like that because that's where we had the last round with that. But obviously, as I said, that's kind of like a north or Shikoku thing. This could certainly be north. Um, I don't really see anything that I, yeah, this, this, this plaque here is longer, which I, I think is something you see in the south and the north, um, like Hokkaido, but the yellow one, I really don't know. I just need to learn my Japan matters at some point to uh, get the better guesses because they are really useful. This is again, a longer, um, a longer like kind of plaque here. So I do wonder uh, whether this could be Hokkaido indeed. I mean, it certainly could be. The head, the head just kind of blocking our view. And this amount of trees is a bit suspicious for Hokkaido, but maybe I do guess further north here again. That may actually be the viable option here instead. But I hope I don't click away from the actual answer. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go north here again as a hedge. Let's actually see about that. And it was all the way south this time, Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi, huh? Okay. Okay, definitely not a good score there. Japan is definitely a country where I could uh, have some roof or improvement, but I would say, uh, those were just particularly difficult Japan rounds. Um, normally I do do better. Anyway, next one here, we got wooden poles. We got yellow outside lines. We've got a, a sign set up for left-hand drive with the uh, triangle instead of the diamond. So yeah, with this diamond sign combined with the yellow outside lines should just be somewhere yeah, with the uh, triangle, sorry. It should be somewhere in South Africa. We got generation four camera as well. So South Africa is uh, yeah immediately the country of choice uh, at this point in time. The other three do not have uh, generation four coverage. Uh, and so this, this sign is also a very common sign to see in South Africa and South African countries. You can also see that one in like Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, and maybe something Middle East as well. But yeah, in South Africa, definitely South Africa. Um, and so what we say here about the landscape, a lot of like corn or something being grown here. Um, it's quite like, it's quite industrialized. We have clumps of trees. It was quite nice. I would say this is somewhere near Hauteng. Uh, like around here, probably in Mpumalanga state. Um, but yeah, I could also see, could also see just in Hauteng itself here. So that's why I'll click right there. Um, yeah, that's about it to say here. Kind of rolling landscape, um, dryish. That definitely fits for this region of the country. We'll be right. Yes, we were indeed in Mpumalanga. So if only we got Japan right, we'd still be on a massive score. But unfortunately, that is not to be. Okay, next one here. Uh, and we appear to be somewhere in Thailand or something like that here based on this language, right? Uh, we have this like, kind of like double lane concrete road that I was telling you guys is more common in Philippines. But of course, to that language, this should just be somewhere in Thailand. Uh, we do have what appears to be a Thai pole here. Ooh, this is interesting. Yeah, we have one of these like bulb things. Now, do we, oh, do we, do we have, ooh. Unfortunately, we don't have any pole close to us because that could actually really have helped us out getting a close guess, but... As for that, I, yeah, yeah. This kind of bulb can help you get a close guess if you can see it clearly, but unfortunately we can't count the number of ribs on it, so we cannot get that kind of uh, perfectly close guess that we'd like to. Uh, yeah, these fences are quite tight, particularly with this kind of like motif going on inside here. 
Um, and apart from that, the main thing to get here is the language, really. Um, I don't think I would have gone Philippines, though. I just think something about it is more tied with these fences, this kind of architecture, these kind of stilts houses that we got going on here, like this particularly, like with the stairs going up to the family room like that. Um, so for this one, I could see kind of anything from north to south. This is very generic. It is Helia. So maybe, I don't really know. I'll probably just click somewhere like that because I can see south here still. Is a lack of, uh, there is a lack of palms. I would say that. We don't see a single palm, so to speak. We do see banana plants everywhere, but no, no actual palm trees from what I can see. Uh, yeah, so maybe I will click further north here. Not really sure, Lampung, seems possible. So I think I'll just go for it. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll find out where this actually is. Should be Thailand indeed, but whereabouts? Now it's another nice guess, 52 kilometers away. So man, we had a really good uh, game there. If only Japan was good. I mean, even if I clicked here, it wouldn't have been good. We had to get the right place there. So I'm gonna learn my guy wires after this video, I think. And uh, the next time we come to Japan, we'll be stronger than ever. We'll learn where those yellow plaques are and all that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe that was the southern long plaque. But anyway, guys, uh, let me know how you guys did in the uh, in the comments below. Thank you very much for the support. Do subscribe and like. Hopefully this was uh, helpful to you in some way. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. I'll see you guys in a video very soon. Till then, goodbye.